to understand someone with CDA diagnosis better in terms of their impairments and functional limitations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. What were the biggest challenges you identified in working with a CDA patient? You mentioned the vision. Mm -hmm. the well, walking. that was when you were the patient, but what about when you were the therapist? What Trying to help them walk and get them staying straight yeah. up. And the posture. So she really like wanted to flex forward. Just the verbal cues, the right verbal, verbal cues for them to understand. So, yeah. So it's, it's like it's easy just to say, oh, reach down there and take off your brakes, but then they can't, like, uh, underneath the car. Yeah. And well, I feel like in the, um, in the bathroom, it could have been harder. I mean, it could have been easy for us because we're younger. Because she but actually has control of her legs. Mm -hmm. but but my grandma, like I can, I've seen my grandma try to pull hers up from her below her knees, and it's hard for her to do that, mm -hmm. especially with a balance and stuff. So, trying to picture somebody that doesn't have good balance and yeah. And I was thinking about it the other day because even when, when you guys have are bound in some way with you know the weight or the clipper or the hair band, but you still have a good trunk to support you, and and so even though we were able to do something with your extremities. With the real patient, the trunk is involved, and so that makes it, you know, even more challenging. For sure. Maybe the the legs kind of up to go over the curb was a challenge in both directions. Definitely. And how did you feel when you were the patient? Did you was there something that happened that that you that surprised you or? Not having my Yeah, well, do you, and do you have any other suggestions for, for how we could do things differently as far as the simulation or, yeah, the gum, the gum didn't work as well as I had hoped it. The, the water, the thickening, uh -huh. if that, they would have thickening in theirs, right? If that wasn't to simu simulate anything. Well, they would, yeah, in their room it would say how much thickener they need okay. in their liquids. And they would, you would I just, add it. Okay. I didn't know if we did that in, like just so we know what it feels like to, to drink that or if it was somehow. Well, it was both. It was it was really to get you to experience what it tastes like and what it feels like in your mouth. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of patients will have to have that though too. Well, if you can think of anything on the dysarthria. Well, and I, like I said, I don't think anything could ever get to you to the point. Like, the vision was pretty on point, mm -hmm. but I don't think you could ever get to the point where you would know what it was like. Yeah, so until you actually... It was kind of hard with the gumball in, but yeah, mm -hmm. still, I mean, you could still maneuver to get your words out. Uh-huh, yeah. Mouth yeah. yeah. What about things you guys knew then you forgot, like gate patterns? I've seen some struggling with bait gate patterns to start with, you know. It's hard to get, like, and it's not, it's, it's bad with us because we know what to do, but it's even harder with real patients because they're impulsive, they don't care what you have to say. Right. But it's hard to get out what you need to tell them before they start doing it. Yeah. Like, they're throwing themselves down, like, the, like, I have to, like, hold them back and be like, no, listen to what I say first and then go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that is very challenging. Yes. And that, I mean, that's real life. They really do that, too. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> well, and with the, like, I was being mean, and, like, Rachel did it back. Like, I, there's been patients that really are like that, that don't want to 
do anything and don't want to get out of bed mm-hmm. and are needy at all times. Well, I had a patient that told me he went and she thought I'd be in a car accident, so I wouldn't even have to see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's that. <laughs> I had a guy that told That's me that. Thank you. A guy that told me that me and the people on the TV <laughs> were plotting to kill him. <laughs> oh my god. Yep, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> He was a refuse for like a week straight. Wow. He he had psychological things going on. (laughs) Some days at at the hospital and inpatient, I felt like I was on the psych ward more than anything. Yeah. Were you on my floor the whole week? (laughs) (laughs) I know. I don't. We never saw each other. Mm. I think it was a really good experience because usually we don't have like we don't don't really know what it's like to have all the patients be treated. Nobody would never act like. It's a pretty good, just a, like, gives you an idea, if nothing else, of what it's gonna actually be like when you have something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you would recommend that we go yeah. ahead and yeah. 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 next year? And Definitely. Well, if you think of any other, you know, ways that we could simulate things, just 